Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing this inequality from the 1987 IMO long list. This was proposed by Great Britain and it's a very non-standard inequality. I invite you to pause and try it out for a minimum of half an hour, ideally an hour, not more than 19 minutes. If you'd like to go along with us, put your first ideas out on paper for the next 15 minutes. And now let's begin. So I want to show you this problem because it's non-standard. Right? It says X, Y, Z are real numbers. So it's not an inequality, a standard one where you have positive reals. That satisfy this relationship. Okay, we have their squares and we need to show this. Hmm. Now, there are many ways to look at this problem, many ways to approach it. Now, if you know some advanced mathematics, you might be able to solve this via a method called Lagrange multipliers, but we're not going to be doing that here. Here, the, the idea is to just try to really break it down into cases and really try to solve it in a more competitive mathematics creative way, right? That's the point here. So first, they are real numbers. Well, what estimates can we do with them being real numbers, right? We can order them. This is symmetric. That's very important for us. But what if, like what estimates, like, let's just look at the estimates we can do first and foremost. So we can say estimate, though before estimating anything, we should also take into consideration when we have an equality here. Because the inequalities we use, we want to make sure that we use them in such a way that the equality in those inequalities corresponds to the inequalities in here. And if we equalize x, y, and z, we don't have an equality here. Because this is going to be two over, this, uh, this is going to be three times two over, the square root of two over three, which is the square root of six. And this becomes two plus some like two thirds. It's basically, it's not each, it can be, it's not equal because because I think the, what's it called, the powers just don't match up. Like the powers in the denominators don't match up here. Yes. So let's double check that just to be sure. So we have the square root of three, three times two squared. So we have the square root of six on one side because every one, a single one of these numbers is going to be, we had two over X is two over three squared if all are equal. So, 3x is 3 times 2 over 3, the, the square root of 2 over 3, which is the square root of 6. And this needs to be, like this is less than equal if the problem is true. Then 2 plus, what do we have? Square root of 2 over 3 cubed. And now this thing right here, 2 plus 2 thirds square root of 2 over 3. It's a close call. Now if we multiply everything by the square root of 3, we will get 3 square roots of 2 less than or equal to 2 square roots of 3 plus 2 thirds the square root of 2. And now we get rid of this by having 3 minus 2 thirds is going to be 7 over 3, the square root of 2, less than or equal to 2 square roots of 3. 6 square roots of 3, less than or equal to 7 square roots of 2. It's a very close call, but we definitely don't get equality is what matters. Like this is, inequality is true, but we don't get equality here. Where we do get equality is where, say, x and y are 1 and z is 0. Then we have 1 plus 1 is 2 and this is 0. Right, so that's where we get the equality. And now we'll need to take that into account when we do our estimates. And it's going to tell us like what estimates we can do, what estimates we can't do. So well, how can we estimate, say, x plus y plus z? Well, to use this condition, we can always use the power mean inequality. But this thing isn't giving us much because this is now the square root of 6 and we need to estimate that with x, y, z. We don't know how, like x, y, z can like be very small in some instances. 
it can be negative for all we know by now. So we can't really just use this as our estimate. We can use, we can take any two of them and use the power mean. Now this is less than two square roots of x squared plus y squared. And we can use this to have a bit of a, what's it called? A soft estimate which, which will hold true for the two biggest ones. This is less than or equal to two. So the whole thing is less than or equal to two. If we take the sum of any two of them, we can say it's less than or equal to two. So we can just like have an ordering here. So that's one sort of estimate we can use. But what happens when you use this estimate? When you use this estimate, we're left with estimating z. If we apply this, we're going to have two plus z needs to be less than or equal to x, y, z plus two. In other words, z needs to be less than or equal to x, y, z. Now, x, y is less than or equal to one, so this isn't really true. Those, let's take a moment actually and look at this. What is this? This is true if and only if z times x, y minus one is greater than or equal to zero. Now, this thing, isn't going, like this is going to be less than zero, less than or equal to zero. So we'll do, we're a ton if this is less than or equal to zero, it's never. Or if this is less than or equal to zero, we're also done. So this sort of like, just like playing around with the estimates, just let us finish the case. If one of them is negative, if Z is negative, then this is true. And because this is true, this is true. Because this is, and because two is greater than or equal to this, which is greater than or equal to x plus y. And we can prove this by squaring. That means that the problem is solved if z is negative. So we can actually assume that z is non-zero, like that it's greater than zero. And this finishes is like maybe just like one case. Though in the other cases, we will need to be more careful and see like what other things we can use. So here's where I invite you to pause for the next five, 10 minutes and see how you would push the problem for, forward. And here's the next sort of idea for me. When I'm just using all of them together, I'm not really getting something. And that's something I can compare to X, Y, Z. X, Y, Z plus two. So can I maybe, the power mean here is the best is the only really thing I can use to estimate this being less than or equal to something. And now can I do it in another way? Keeping in mind that when X and Y are one and Z is zero, that we all have equality. And the answer is I could do it by saying, well, let's take X and let's take Y plus Z into the power mean. And then this is less than or equal to the square root of two, x squared plus y plus z squared. And this is cool because what? It gives me that this is equal to the square root of, we're gonna have x squared plus y squared plus z squared, which is two, so we're using the problem condition. And we're gonna have, so two times two, plus two y z. And when we're estimating this with something, it's good that that thing is as small as possible. So that's why it's good to pick y z as opposed to x and z being together. Because this is smaller than two y z is smaller than two x z. And so it's a better estimate, right? It's a much tighter estimate, I should say. And this is equal to well, we can get the two outside. This is two square roots of one plus y z. Now let's look at under what condition, like is this, this is not done, right? But is it done in any case? Like can we maybe do a case by case analysis and then it will be done maybe sometimes, right? That's a thing to look at. And here, this needs to be less than or equal to two plus x, y, z. Now let's see when that's the case. So if we square both sides, 
we'll have 4 plus 4yz. That's what we have here. And then here we'll have less than or equal to 4 plus 2 times 2 times xyz, 4yz, plus xyz squared. And this is true, and this is now turning into us needing to have that x minus 1, 4x minus 1, yz, plus x squared, y squared, z squared, needs to be greater than or equal to 0. Now here, this is not done, but this is true if x is greater than 1. Right? If x is greater than 1, then the inequality is finished. So now we know that x, y, and z are between 0 and 1. And now we can see, like, maybe there's something that we can do in that case when x, y, and z are all between 0 and 1. Maybe there's a different sort of estimate we can create to show that we have this inequality that holds true. And here I invite you to pause for another 5 to 10 minutes. Mind you, this problem is really just you need to try a bunch of different things. Keep in mind when you have the equality and then try to maneuver around the problem there. Now the next step is, so we have this. We have that when we multiply any two of them together, we get a number less than or equal to 1. And now, how can we get x, y, z using these inequalities? Well, we're going to have to multiply something along the lines of z is, say, greater than or equal to 0, and x times y is greater than or equal to 0. Uh, here we can actually only have that z times 1 minus xy. This thing right here is greater than or equal to 0. However, this doesn't give us the xy that we want on this side. So we need to have a negative z. And given z is, say, between 0 and 1, we can have this. And this holds true for x, like if we switch these numbers around. And this is an inequality which gives us 1 plus x, one's x, y, z, and gives us a minus z and a minus x, y, greater than or equal to 0. So now what do we need? We need, so we're going to have z on this side, and we need the other inequality to have something with 1 plus what we need, we're going to need to cancel out the xy, 1 plus xy needs to be greater than or equal to y and x, like we need y and x on this side. And is this true? Or when is this true is a better question. And the answer is when we put everything on the other side, it's 1 minus x times 1 minus y greater than or equal to 0. So this is true in this case. And now if we sum these two up, we finish the problem. Now this is why I want to show you the problem, because it's a different way of looking at it. It's a case-by-case -case analysis. It's not easy. Now, another solution, which I thought was more instructive, perhaps, is, or a different way of uh, constructive, was to say, okay, this is really a function in x, y, and z, right? If I just plug this like this, it's going to be a function in x, y, and z, and it needs to be less than or equal to something. How can I make this side less than or equal to something? And the answer is I can make estimates using Cauchy. Though here, I, if I make any sort of estimate with Cauchy, I'll use x plus y squared here in one parent bracket. And I'll have z squared here as well. Why? So that I can get this condition. And then here I'll be left with 1 and 1 minus xy squared. And now this leaves us, leaves us with a equation. This is 2 plus 2xy. 
one, mi one plus one minus xy squared. Now it might not be the best thing to estimate, x times y is the biggest one, yz is the smallest one. Maybe we can estimate with this one, maybe not. Though let's keep in mind, when is, does the equality hold true here? This is going to be, like in Cauchy, this over this needs to be equal to this over this. Doesn't seem likely if z is zero that we have that. If I'm not mistaken, I think that's when Cauchy has equality. And now, so maybe this is not a, the best estimate. Maybe we need to take into consideration if we just switched here, say, x instead of x and y, we put x outside, z inside, and then one minus zy here then we might have something that's much easier, better to work with. Because mind you, we need to estimate this is less than or equal to four. And here, when we check the equality cases, we'll have one over one is one over one. We're good in the equality case. So it, maybe this could be less than or equal to four. And now let's check to see if it is or if it's not. Now, what do we have? We have that this is going to equal, let's put yz as equal to sub t. We know that t is less than or equal to one. And now we have this equation is going to be two plus two t times one plus one minus t squared. Now this is equal to two plus two times one minus t squared plus two t plus two t times one minus t squared. So now how do we deal with this? This is going to be four minus four t here plus two t squared. And then here going to have plus two t and then again a plus 2t and a minus 2t times 2t, 4t squared and then a plus 2t cubed. And what happens when we look at all the t's? So it seems 4t, 2t, 2t, we get rid of them, we get 2t squared and minus 4, so we get we get 2 t squared times 1 times actually it seems to be this is minus 1 times t minus 1 needs to be less than or equal to 0 if the equality is to hold true. And because t minus 1 is going to be less than or equal to 0, this thing is true and so we've solved the problem. This is a non-standard application of Cauchy. It's not something you see all the time. It's rare that you see minuses in Cauchy, especially when you're doing it at the beginning. And that's why I think this problem is particularly instructive. It's difficult. For me, the idea was just to show this to you, that sometimes you can do a case-by-case -case analysis in inequalities and have different things that you're comparing to, to actually finish the problem. Because that's what we did here. We had one case and then another case when x was less than one, greater than one, and finish the problem. This solves our problem, and as always, thanks for problem solving.